Hey, welcome to the Lockdown Lookup. We are talking these days about the armor of God. On Friday, did a kind of basic introduction, just talking about the kinds of opposition that we face in the Christian life. Three sources of opposition, the world, flesh, and the devil. Uh, the opposition of the flesh is something that we came across in the fruit of the spirit discussion. It's there in Galatians 5. And the opposition that comes from the devil is something that is taken up in the discussion of the armor of God in Ephesians 6. So that's what we're talking about. The opposition that comes from the devil, who is a real, intelligent, powerful, spirited being intent on opposing everything to do with God and his kingdom and that includes us but as we learned that does not mean that we need to be afraid but we do need to be aware and that's what this armor of god passage is about of being aware of the schemes of the devil so that we can withstand the opposition that he's bringing against us so today we're going to get into the active part of what it means to stand against the opposition that comes from the devil. Now, in this Ephesians passage, Ephesians 6 from 10 through to 23, there are really three main commands given, three imperatives in this passage. So really three things for us to do. So the first of these imperatives is that we are supposed to be strong. Secondly, we are to put on and that's where we get to all those items of the armor of God. So be strong, put on third command to stand or withstand. So I want to look at just that first imperative today to be strong. This is what it says in verse 10 of Ephesians 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. That's all we're going to look at today is that one command be strong so it is an imperative think about that what what does that mean to be strong well, okay so all of a sudden gonna like grow muscles or what does it mean to just someone tells you to just be strong it sounds like just snap out of it how do you do that well this is where it gets interesting so the word be strong the verb used there is actually a imperative but it is a passive imperative so we've been told to do something but to do it in a passive way. How does that work? Well, it's the kind of action where you intentionally receive action. In other words, what it simply means is be strengthened in the Lord. Be strengthened. Now, that makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? Be strengthened. In other words, actively draw on intentionally receive ask accept the strength that the Lord supplies if you think about it the victorious Christian life in almost every single sense is about actively drawing on the strength that God provides even in our battle against the flesh, it's actively drawing on the Holy Spirit who fights that battle with us and for us. The whole victorious Christian life is actively drawing on the strength of God. The reality is, He's got lots of it. He's got an abundance of strength and power. I mean, the logic here is really simple. God is powerful. We are not we're with God, therefore we have access to His power. So draw on that. Be strengthened in the Lord. And, and it says this, in the strength of His might. What does it mean? We often use the word might and power. And really what the strength of His might means. So be strong in the Lord and in His capability to assert his authority that's what might means God's capability to assert his authority and that is immense he is immensely capable of asserting his authority so strengthen yourself with that may that give you confidence and may that actually give you strength the strength that comes from the Lord 
and his capability to assert his authority. You know, all through the book of Ephesians, if you've ever read through it, there is this consistent theme of how much power we have. Oh, sorry, we don't have, but God has that we actively draw from. For example, Ephesians 1 verse 19, that you may know what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe. Ephesians 3 verse 16, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your innermost glory. We prayed that prayer in our prayer meeting on Wednesday. We may be strengthened with his power by his spirit. Ephesians 3 verse 20, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think according to the power at work within us. So you see, we're not without power, but it's not our power. It's God's. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. You know, there's the story in the Old Testament of David as he is um, fighting the Philistines. And so he's got his base at Ziklag and he's off fighting the Philistines. And while he's out fighting one particular war, the Amalekites come and loot Ziklag and take the women and children with them, right? Cowardly. So the men are away fighting the Philistines, the Amalekites come in and take their wives and their children into captivity. So David and his men return and they find this devastation and, and they, are, they are just besides themselves. And just, just imagine what David is going through. I mean, here they are fighting a battle when they perhaps should have been home protecting their families. So he's just riddled with guilt, with fear. I mean, depression is setting in. I mean, the, the people around David, his loyal leaders and army, were even talking of stoning him because they were so devastated that this thing had happened under his watch. So just imagine the compromised position that David is in. This depression, this fear, this guilt. Listen, that's enemy territory. I mean, forget about the Philistines and Amalekites. That's devil territory. It's when we're in those kinds of vulnerable, compromised situations that he's going to come and he's going to wreak havoc and bring all sorts of fear and all sorts of thoughts into our minds. And what does David do? Well, it turned out he'd been reading Ephesians 6. Obviously not really, but this is what David did. 1 Samuel 30 verse 6, And David was greatly distressed. We understand that. For the people spoke of stone in him, because all the people were bitter in soul, each for his sons and daughters. And then we read this. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. You see that? He acknowledges he's in a vulnerable position. And he strengthens himself in the Lord his God. God. That's the principle here. Of be strong. Be strengthened. Draw. Actively draw on the abundance of strength and power that God has and that is ours who live in His kingdom through faith in Jesus Christ. May you know that strengthening today.